When I was in high school, we had an assignment in my senior English class to read a literary classic and then sit down to discuss it with our English teacher. When I looked at the books to choose from, I was greatly excited to see the book The Natural on the list because, well, that's a baseball book and I'd actually seen the movie. Turns out, however, the movie does not follow the same plot line as the book. I actually read the book. My eyes landed on each word, so I read it technically, but my reading with the eyes was not attended with the exercise of my head or heart. So when it came time to discuss the book with my English teacher, all I wanted to talk about was the epic home run that ends the story of the natural with lights exploding and cascading all over the field and the great anthem that plays as Roy Hobbs trots around the bases. Turns out, however, the book doesn't end the same way as the movie does. I had walked into that meeting full of pride. I'd actually read the book, but I limped out of that meeting with a crushed ego. If we're not mindful, the same disaster can happen to us in our lives as Christians, but with far greater consequences than just a lower grade than expected. The Apostle Paul tells us as much when he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, Therefore, let anyone who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. The Apostle Paul has been instructing the Corinthian church to lay down their biblical liberties out of love for one another in order to help others grow closer to Christ. The issue at hand is whether or not Corinthians should eat meat offered to idols. Ethically, there's nothing wrong with doing that. But for the sake of other believers, young or new in the faith, the Corinthian Christians should rethink their ethical liberties. Paul then gives them an example from his own life in chapter 9 of how he had laid down liberties for the Corinthians' sake and then concludes the chapter by saying that in order to lay down liberties, we have to exercise self-control in all areas of life. But that's okay, and it's even good because eternal rewards await those who live such a life. So chapters 8 and 9 have shown us how our lifestyle, whether it be with or without self-control as Christians, affects others. But chapter 10 is going to show us how a lack of self-control impacts the individual, the danger of a lack of self-control. And the first place self-control begins is with the head and heart. An experience observed only with the senses, but unattended with the head and heart, will leave you deceived and vulnerable. The assumption that religious observance alone equals spiritual faithfulness will leave you scattered as a corpse across the land. So take heed lest you fall. When you pray today, please remember Tracy Miller and his family, our missionaries in Georgia. And also remember the Hey Hey Life Word broadcast that's heard in Tanzania.